Welcome to my messy life. Take my hand and dive right on in with me. It's gonna be alright. Messy and perfect life with Lee. Hello, Jackie Harris. Hello, Lee. I am happy to see you. Even when I just see your face on an Instagram post or something, mm-hmm. there's something about you that is so playful and sweet and exciting. Like oh. I want to grab you and have a play date. Oh, I like play dates. That's nice. Are you That's kind of sweet. sweet and exciting? Would you think that about yourself? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty real. Yeah, you're I very think, real. I think I'd say that about myself. And I, I enjoy life generally. So That's it. You have fun. You I enjoy do. It. You make yourself laugh. And I do. I love that. I do. I do enjoy life. I really feel. I didn't always. Me either. But at this point now, ever since I turned fifty, which was a very short while ago. <laughs> uh, How old are I, you? Uh, fifty-seven. You're fifty-seven. Yeah. Wow, you look like a real fox. Thanks. Isn't that weird? Wait to come till up I get all this shit done. Are you going to get a facelift? If I had the money. Oh, me too. I look. My like dad was a plastic and reconstructive surgeon. Jackie Stallone was he really? I'm not even sure what she looks like. I do know Frank Stallone and Sylvester I think she's Stallone. She's passed, so I don't think she looks very good. Jackie Stallone was that his wife? His mom. Oh, I was like, did she pass <laughs> from natural causes <laughs> or from a face? I would think just from old age. I would guess. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking not was from maybe a his ex-wife. Who is his ex-wife? Did he have one or is he always with Jennifer Flavin? He's been with her for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I just saw a movie that her daughter was starring in, but I still Sistine. don't know which one it was. It's the one with the shark in the water yeah. deep. Deep in the water. 57 meters down? Psst, 40 th- 49. <laughs> 127 hours down. Where she has to cut off her own leg to did get she, away from the shark. <laughs> did she go to? That's like coyote ugly. Right? You cut off your arm instead of waking up the person you made love with because they looked cute when you were wasted. Right. Butterface. Yeah. What is it? Is that what it is? A butterface where someone is has a hot body, but not the face? I just heard that for the first time the other really? week. I went to a USC game with my friend, <laughs> mm-hmm. Lynn. And we were sitting there, and we we're sitting like in this little bar area because they don't sell alcohol there. It was like a little VPI area, yeah. VPI, whatever. No, VIP area. Mm. I don't know. Mm, writing on your pillows. Yeah, um, and a VIP area yeah. at the USC at college, and this is why they Where wonder why the tell. fucking system is destroyed. No, so so a scam. You can't buy a drink there. I wanted a beer or something, yeah, or a lot of wine or vodka. I don't right. remember what Cocktails I wanted. Something at the game. So I went into this area, sat down, and then I was just noticing the people coming, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed this amazing body. I saw two really good looking guys walking out and two girls behind them. Right. And this one girl was kind of frumpy, whatever, but she was super pretty. And the other girl had just like, her body was so sick. I couldn't stop looking at her legs and her butt. And I watched her. And as she turned the corner, I I literally was like, oh, like... To myself, because I was so shocked at what I saw in her face area. Was it just scary or was it old? No, just, just unattra- really just unattractive. unattractive. Right. And I remember kind of doing this like little right. jerk reaction. And I looked next to my friend Lynn and her mouth was open looking at her too. She was doing the same thing. And then she turned to me and said, what's the word you think? Butterface. But a, butterface? Butterface. A butterface. And I said, what is butterface? And she said, everything looks good, butterface. Yeah. And it made me start laughing so hard, not because we're making fun of someone, but because I had that visceral reaction to that gorgeous right. body with that face. Right. And at the same time, my friend did, which was interesting. I had that happen to me on, on um, I mean, what's that little cute street, you know, in Hancock Park, the little one block long with the restaurants and stuff, or uh, I can't remember. Oh, I know. Larchmont Village? Yeah. What's that street called? Mm, He's sure. calling it Larchmont Village. I think it's just Larchmont. 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 Yeah. Large one. I was at a magazine stand a zillion years ago and looking down at the bottom rack of magazines and I turned and the first thing I saw was like disgusting boots, like just like so phenomenal, like toe and color and fabric immediately went, Ugh, oh, those are good. And as I looked disgusting at the boots, means good. disgusting, like revoltingly amazing, like the greatest I've boots. I've never heard of that. Just nauseatingly amazing. As, like you, it, wait, just, ah, like wait, it, as you were describing like it, it, I was trying to decipher, yeah. 
Is this good or bad? Like, right. Is it good? No, it was so fat. It was or, so good. Yeah. When that instant reaction, that Holy instant, shit. oh, if it was in a magazine, I'd tear it out and yeah. put it on my wall. And I saw the toes and I did, I did one of those sort of slow-mo scans where you go like, oh, toes. And then it was like up and they were lace up to the knee and it was like, ew, ew. And into this like thigh that was like stunning and gorgeous. And then the best skirt and tits and it went up and then it was um, a face <laughs> and I was like, whoa. And it was uh, Courtney Love. But a million years ago. Oh, wait so a she second. she was freshly injected and sheened. I think she must have just had a treatment done. So it was like a a, a fish. So wait, like when you make head. the woe, see, still still with your description, the, I can't the, figure the out if it's flipped, good or bad. The woe flipped from sick, Courtney sick, Love. amazing, amazing, amazing. Don't, <gasps> you know. Because her face oh, looked scary in that moment. It scared me. It was a fish head. But is it normally scary? Because I thought she was kind of sexy with Probably, her big lips. This is many, many years ago, but it's, I think she had literally just been to the doctor. I oh, think she it, walked it was, out of a doctor's office, <laughs> you know, with, it looked like she had Vaseline on her head. Yeah, is it that kind of how I look right now? And the hair, you look very pretty, very dewy. I, I put on a lot of dusty. Do you remember when dewy was powder. bad? Yeah. Do you remember when dewy was greasy you and bad? Powder it out yeah. hard. Now we're fluffing dew back on. Although now they have dew face with matte lips, whereas we just did matte. In the 90s, it was just matte. Yeah. No sheen. You're into fashion? No, just as. Just because as I like have I not like made it. those observations. I like it. I'm into all things, the visuals. I'm into visuals. Whether I it's went, clothes what do you or think pillows. I went for you today? I like your thumb holes. I love thumb holes. I'm a fan so of a thumb much. hole. But I wore the I love you shirt because I think that you're playful and fun. Right. And then the red pants to go with it and white boots. Yeah. And then I looked at myself and I was like, am I going to summer camp or am I underdressed? Or is it Valentine's Day? What happened? Can you feel the, the love tonight? tonight? Do you know any other words to that song? Doesn't matter because I'm here. Um. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah. do you do any of that stuff, fillers um, and whatnot? I have. I haven't in a couple of years. I mean, is I it only... because of money, or is it because mm -hmm. of yeah? You would if you could. I would. There's just too many things that have to take priority. I know. I just. It's hard to justify. It's hard for me to justify sleepwear. I should be able to justify Botox and filler though, because you can see that. Yeah, but it's just so Wait, fucking sleepwear expensive. makes me laugh. You're like sleepwear. throwing a t-shirt and a pair of underwear. Call like it a once day. in a while. I'll go out and I'll if I have a thing or you know because I have a teenager and he's a boy. He only, looks like your twin, right? Yeah, his eyeballs are your eyeballs. Dad. He we have the same eyeballs. But when when we go on a holiday together, we like we we love cruises. You say holiday because you're from Canada, right? Oh yes, we say words that are. English. That's right. So holiday. Well, we're on a holiday. Well, we like to take a boat sea cruise. We all share a room. It's a big one, but it's Where a sharing are you from a room. In Canada? Montreal. And your husband? It's Toronto. Toronto. Mm -hmm. And you met? In Toronto on a sitcom. Oh Canadian really? sitcom. I was gonna guess Second City, but no. <gasps> no. He he was pre Second City. Yeah, he was pre me being in Second City. I met him before that. You were in Second City? I was in Second City in Toronto. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's just when I hear any actor people, that's the first place I think that, that he came from. But he actually got a sitcom and you did before? Well, we were, yeah. I mean, in Canada, I I was doing, um, I was not a comedian. I was doing um, plays. Serious yeah. plays like Shakespeare? Serious. No, like Canadian plays. Oh, okay. Like original plays. Oh, nice. With lots of monologues where you sit on a box and do that And look off into the distance? I wouldn't know why. I wouldn't even ask why. Nobody asked me. That kind she of says, thing. is she staring up right? in the distance and longingly? The, right. The knee. With her knee A lot of those up. plays. I did a lot of those plays. So you had the kind of acting or creative, expressive this is weird. feeling when you were young? Yeah. She's getting adjusted. Well, shit. Sorry. There. How's that? So when you were I'm young, did you think pillow. I want to get in all that? Uh, yeah, I did. I did the school play and then I and then I ended up not doing that i ended up having a career my jack it's like there's a weird thing just a second no you just rearranged like but three. i'm gonna keep chatting with you you came in today you know i was like oh my gosh it's exciting i'm Sweet, good now. high energy and then you came like dark hair yeah dark fingernails right dark jeans dark boots so are you kind of one of those oh i'm dark in clothing 
What are they Dark called? Dark in clothing. Emu? It, what is that? What? What the kids who they call them emu? Emo? Emo. <laughs> I'm an emu. I'm an emu. <laughs> an emo. Yeah, so no, I'm always in black. Aren't emos kind of brooding? Although when I was pregnant, do you remember it was all about the juicy suits? Like when you had Charlie, it was all the juicy suits is what we wore. And from the time I can't remember, I had a baby until they were in middle school every day with Uggs and ponytails. And that's when I was at my most oh, depressed. Oh, the juicy suits. Juicy suits. suits. The, the velvet pants. The and juicy, that. the velour pants and the velour oh jackets. Yeah. But when I was pregnant, I had a bright red one. And I legit looked like Santa because oh I was God. fully pregnant <laughs> with this juicy suit. But then, uh, no, I'm always in black generally. Yeah. With a little bit of it's just kind of Johnny silver Cash or hipster. taupe. Just, just comfortable. Just, just your style? Just comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like it. Thank you. Yeah. You like color. I actually like gray. Uh Uh-huh. You're good in gray. I like muted grays a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But today I just felt, that's what's making me laugh is you're dressed in all black. And I was like, oh my gosh, that playful little lover of life is going to be here. I want to have a play date. But look, I've got sparkles in my top. You have sparkles. You have nice Mm -hmm. bosoms. Yeah, I do. You do Yeah, I do. That's my beauty. My little, you know, little women. Joe, your one beauty is her long hair. My boobs. Yours is, yeah. yeah. So do you have to try and feature them off, as often as possible? No, I just know they're there. So oh, when I'm feeling low, confidence. I go, oh, oh. Let me look oh. at my breasts. Yeah, that's all right. You should snap a photo of them so you can just look real <laughs> but quick But now I think photo. I'd be afraid. I think, I think that in my head they're better than they are in photo now because I am not a child anymore. Oh my gosh, so. isn't that weird? So I prefer the thought of them. But I do pull them out at ladies' night once in a while when we start having, you know, let's, Let's get there. Let's get real. And hey, I go, you guys, you having fun? Look at my titties. Look at mine. And then everyone agrees that they are spectacular. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait to see. We show them I'll after. I'll show them to you. For sure. After we're done. But it'll have to be in privy. Yeah, we'll go. In the privy. In the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Just we'll go in the privy. In privy. In the privy. Now, is that um, uh, up northward as well in the privy? Or what's no, happening? That's just me. That's, that's just, just you being your sassy that's self. Just, that's just army talk. So why are you doing army talk? I don't know. Because of your jacket? Probably. Yeah. Probably because I look very much like I'm in the army today. But you look like like a colonel because you have a lot of stuff. I'm very, yeah, I'm like a general. I like that. Like a lot going on. You know, I got breast implants mm. when I was 19. Right. My father was a surgeon and I went in to get money to go to the swimming pool. And I passed his partner and I pulled up my cover up and flashed him my bikini. Mm-hmm. And he was like, uh, Lee, c- come back here a moment. He goes, do that again, please. And I pulled it up and he said, you have very broad shoulders and broad hips and no breasts. You should just get a little baby implant in there to even it out. And I go, that sounds like a great idea. All right, I'll make a consultation, Dr. Hines. And then I went into my dad and I got money to go to the swimming pool, went to the swimming pool. And I thought, I'm kind of in, why not? So I made a consultation and my dad said, what in the hell are you doing here? And I said, I'm going to get a breast augmentation from Dr. Hines. He's like, over my goddamn dead body. And I said, well, I'd hate to see you die, this young father. Anyway, Dr. Hines, and I went in and had my thing and he gave me these two little baby implants. I put them in. I was like, I have a little bit of boobs. They're not very big, but they're a little something because I was A. And I got them. So my point is wow. that because you're talking about your boobs now. Yeah. So my boobs were nice because that implant shape was nice. Uh-huh. But now at 53 and uh-huh. breastfed two of my children, uh-huh. there's my cute implants and then there's my old lady boob kind of under Are it. Are they still the same implants? Yeah. So you haven't had anything changed? Nothing. I heard you have to. Well, have they to say all kinds of things them. now and I don't listen to most. Right. So my dad once said, if it ain't broke don't fix it of course so yeah. that kind of was in my head a long time yeah but now i'm getting every six months mammograms because they saw something that was nothing right but they you have to go back for school but they're doing some new 3d and all some other things that are really cool i don't you know what they're called right now but they can see my implant and they said wow it is in really great shape wow so i didn't have to do anything so my dad's old adage. But you could breastfeed and everything I could breastfeed. so they were good yeah because i didn't get a reduction yeah. where they cut your nipple and all right your nerves, yeah, yeah 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 they just stuck it i guess i couldn't breastfeed why i think that's part of why they <laughs> held up so well why i just couldn't couldn't do it had did the nursing try? knots oh fuck did, did i like try health? i had fucking cunty nursing nazis yelling at me oh like God. i was an asshole oh i hate that and like you know hold it like this hold it like that suction and 
pumping and bringing home machines and you know it that's, just was like horrible and then i had a thing in my boob and when he was three months old i had to go have a lumpectomy so and it was fine was it because the milk was all clotted up? i think it was all just clotted up i yeah. think it just didn't you know maybe because my nipples are so perfect and little Wait, they didn't work i don't know are they little they're are little. your nipples high I have madonna's under? boobs madonna that's when i knew i had a nice boobs i always hated my boobs because all my friends had these like you know decent sized nipples and good soft boobs when you're like 16 you're like those are the boobs i should have instead mine are all like i had a boy weird and at 16 oh did you yeah. i had the little nip and then madonna in the 80s those photos came out when she got famous of all her you know the ones she posed for that they released yeah. in penthouse or whatever and she had hairy underarms and had boobs and i was my boobs were her boobs and I went, those are great boobs. And everybody was like, Madonna has amazing boobs. You were like, oh and my I was gosh, like, I've arrived. Those are my boobs. I have that. <laughs> wait, I have the same boobs as her. So my boobs must be good. And that's when I owned my boobs. Oh, I love to hear the story, good story when you have a come about and you own yeah. your power. It's nice. What what was it in Little Women? She said you, you're my one beauty. Your one beauty. Her one, and then her sister, the little bitchy one who Kirsten Dunst played in the Winona Ryder version. She was really good. She was like, oh, I've never Joe. read that or watched it. Oh, I, I it was my life. Because, Should I watch that with my girls? Yeah, it's beautiful. The Winona Ryder one. Okay, it's really she Will did a great job. You remind me after because I don't yeah. have a writing utensil and I forget. Little Women. Went on a rider. You know, when Susan you were talking Sarandon. about having a baby, yeah. and then them, there, there are people who are similar. I know the word Nazi, but that who are so focused on you doing it the way they think you should do it. Everyone. And I remember when I had Charlie, I mm -hmm. almost died. I remember when you almost died. Charlie. I remember where I was. I remember being at Largo at the back of the room, talking to your husband knowing and seeing you when you were pregnant and hearing the story about you almost dying and oh being gosh, just crazy and i may have been pregnant at the time because i think charlie's how old he's 20 okay no i wasn't i mean i was but it probably yeah. i had so many dead babies you can't even count are them. you kidding oh god I how many miscarriages six i was always pregnant you had miscarriages i had four before and two after like, why I don't know. What the doctor why did said. I have? Why did I keep trying? You no, mean, or why hell did no. I, um, why, why did the doctor say? I don't was know. It it's sperm? like it's like you have one and you go, oh, it's because I was an Aspen in their first trimester and it was the height and the, that's fine. I went to Aspen for the Aspen Comedy Festival when I the first time I was pregnant and I had a miscarriage and it was like, well, that makes sense because another friend of mine also had one. We were in a cast together at the same time from the air quality i guess and i thought well that's what it was and i had another one and i don't think that you can lose a baby from being in altitude no i don't think you i mean people don't lose babies when they're you know refugees and they're running from countries yeah. and they're in deep frozen water yeah i mean i think it is what it is yeah. i don't really it know be, but i don't, we don't know. know why yeah we don't know why because so many people do a few of those mm -hmm. right a yeah few oh yeah of those a lot. miscarriages and then mm -hmm. they go into infertility or they Right. Or the doctor says something's not working when you right. can find another plan. And then being in LA, okay? it was very much, um, and I had great friends and girlfriends who were like, you know, what's going on? Well, go to this guy. So I went to one guy after a couple and he was amazing. He pin he, we did, you know, testing and test this and Paul test and me test. And, and <laughs> they said I was too genetically similar to Paul Greenberg. So white Anglo-Saxon Protestant lady is too similar to Russian Polish Jew. So, so that, that's not true, right? Well, no. It's true? It, what happened was they used to have a freaky deaky treatment where they, what would happen is I would get pregnant. And because in theory, we were too genetically similar, when the pregnancy would occur, and gestation and the start of everything going, you know, the egg and the thing and the wall and the thing, my body would go, oh, you have a flu. Let's get rid of that. Let's get, let's immune system go into play and rid yourself of this disease. Wow. So it would reject. Yeah. 
So the theory was if you could get my body to recognize the pregnancy as a pregnancy as opposed to an illness, then I could stay pregnant. And it was very freaky. And he sent me to this woman at UCLA and they took pints of blood from Paul and put it down into just white blood cells in these weird, crazy needles that I'm kidding you not were knitting needles and injected them into my thighs so that it would be in my system. Wow. Yeah, and my numbers had to be a certain level. And then if they were that, that level, I could possibly. Is that when you got pregnant with your son? And I did get pregnant. Well, I wasn't got pregnant. I got pregnant with, with my son. Well, I got pregnant. I got pregnant and miscarried. And then I got pregnant again. And they said to me, don't get pregnant now. Wait till you come in and get your numbers. Don't do it because you'll have a miscarriage because your numbers aren't where they're supposed to be. And then I went to New York for a gig with Colin Mockery, we, the, probably the worst and greatest show I've ever done. It was Cinderella on Broadway. That's a different story. <laughs> it was not Broadway and it was not Cinderella, but it was epic. And I, um, and I felt, I knew I was going to get pregnant. I knew and we made that baby and I looked in the mirror and I said, it's going to stick. It's a boy and I'm pregnant. Wow. And I went home and I said, I screwed up. I wasn't supposed to. And they gave me more and I had a baby. Wait, did you, um, are you intuitive? Yes, fully. You are? I'm psychic. Are you psychic? Mm-hmm. So what, what kind of psychic abilities? I, I call it party games because I don't really, um, you know, I would never be like, I'm psychic. But, no, but I, I, wanted, we're, I, have I call it party games. I, I take usually a person, hold their hand, take an object. And I, and I, if I'm in the right zone I get, and connected with them, I can see pictures like a postcard. Oh, it's wow. like a postcard comes up. It starts as like a bunch of sort of like a little mini home movie. And then it turns into an actual photograph, uh, like a postcard. And then I see everything in that. And so when you, you see a postcard, you see the movie start. And then it's a, the a movie slide starts with feelings. It starts with what I'm getting. Hmm. a relationship or a state of mind or a period in time or a person Hmm. or a place. And these things start happening and then they connect. And sometimes they don't. Sometimes someone's just like, "Mm, I don't really know. Other times they go, uh, and then they tell me a week later, I did find out that that was the place we went in the summer and that did happen to me. Things like that. Wow. Yeah. Or in real time, do they ever go, oh my gosh, how did you know All that? the time. Yeah. 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 Like I'll describe a car, a place. I did it with a friend once where I saw, you know, the East Coast. I saw the color of the building. I saw the grass. I saw the car. I saw the event. I saw the What's relationships. What's the point of seeing all that? Just tell me you can see in their past or did they get it's, something it's from it? It's more past. It's not, I wouldn't, I mean, future, you don't no, know. No, no, no. My point is, so you see a car in a building. What's the significance of that? I see an event. I see an event occurring where the car is. What's happening? I can hear the the conversation. It's I see it like a little slide that's got sometimes a bit of dialogue. That's maybe an extended, like a commercial. So the way that you're sharing your gift is just showing. Nineteen seventy three Cape Cod. I see like so you show them kind of a a memory. You give them a, a live memory. Yeah. Um, and I've learned that when things come into my head, my m- my my human logical person goes, well, that doesn't make sense. You know, I did something on someone once and the name Chandler kept coming in and I and I wanted to throw it away because I knew for a fact that she was friends with Matthew Perry and he played Chandler Bing. So I didn't, I was like, well, that's why Jackie logically is saying Chandler because of that. As soon as we put our logic into it, it it, it fucks up. And then I said, you know, Chandler. And I said it out loud and I, and it was screaming at me, Chandler, Chandler, Chandler. And then it turned out the name of the street in the place that I saw was named Chandler. So it, it made sense that had nothing to so do with Matthew Perry. My question about that is, <clears throat> that's freaking amazing. Am I amazing. a witch? Yeah. No, I totally know you're a witch. witch. I, am a I witch. knew that as soon as you came in black. I was like, yeah. I'm learning so I'm much about her. And you got your witch pointy shoes on right. too. Mm-hmm. But I do love those shoes. Yeah, they're, they're glove boots. I mean, I want to get they're them. They're glove boots. I love boots. them so much. The I don't helmet, know what glove boots helmet lang. They're gloves. There's no socks. They're just helmet leather. Helmet lang. So they're 
a thousand? They're not. They're not a thousand. They were like, they're pretty cheap, actually. I want them then. I got them on sale. They're old. They're last year. I really want them. Thank you. Do you mind if I copy you? To copy? Go ahead. Just take them off if you wear a size eight. I mind that. I do wear a size eight. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Hmm. Well, we'll see. I might snatch shit. him from you while you show me your breasts in the bathroom. Shit, right? In the privy. But here's a, the, the psychic thing that you're talking about mm-hmm. is a lot of times people get things that help people. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you give them a snapshot just saying, uh, I can see this from your life. And they're like, holy shit, that happened. How the hell right. did you know? That's why it's a party game. Yeah, so you're, just you're like, right now doing you it as know. a party game. But right. I want to offer to you that there's a, a, a lot that's available to you mm-hmm. and that you're able to accept or channel in and yeah. share. Yeah. So it might be neat to think of um, opening it or widening it a tiny bit. I know. I, I almost wish there was some sort of a retreat I could go on that I see. Here's the thing. I, I think that uh, at the core, I'm a very lazy person. So I think whenever I feel an attachment to any <laughs> any gift, I'm anything sorry. I do is that I have a lot of, I have, I mean, I sound very braggy, but the reason I'm being braggy is because at 57, I I now own what I do well. Yes. I know I organize a closet really well. Yeah. That's what I do well. Nice and then somebody and goes, nice tits, a closet organizer and, and glove boots. But, but I think that, that if there's something that when you're young and you don't know who you are and you don't know what you are and somebody taps into something that they think you can do, it's really exciting. And it's very like, I, I had a career when I was uh, 20 years old. I was the head of, of, of 35 stores, merchandising and organizing. I was, I was, yeah, I had a career because somebody recognized that and said, why don't we do that? And I enjoyed it, and I made money for the first time in my life. You know, I worked at Ponderosa Steakhouse before that. So hot. that was very exciting. Yeah, I was super hot polyester, wraparound hot. skirts, denim. Denim, fake denim, phenom, <laughs> polyester phenom. Um, and, and that was exciting. But now I get stressed when someone is like, you, you do that thing. You should take a class in it. Yeah, I hate Or sure. you should... But what I'm right? telling you, what is mm, really neat about out. knowing mm. what your gifts are, mm. and what I do too is I'm every day I'm learning, yeah. every day I'm expanding my consciousness, every day I'm allowing all of me to yeah. show up in whatever way it could be of service, and so I could have fun, right, and make money as well. But I never say no to anything. I never do things that feel like a lot of work, right, or uphill or uh, heavy or stressful because. That means you're not in line with what you're supposed to be doing. Right. But just allowing yourself to have the thought that maybe today I'm going to say universe or God or whatever you right. call the higher power. I'm open to exploring this today in a new way if something comes up. I'm not going to say, no, just experience it. I don't know. Because I think we have what we have in, in us. Yeah. And just our mind creates little stories of why we can't access it in a greater way. Yeah, and work is a very bizarre thing because um, I find that I re- the things I really enjoy doing are not are I enjoy them because they're doing something for somebody. That's my favorite. And if somebody is like, you know, if somebody puts it into my head that this should be something I do as a business or as a oh, way, no. it's no. I I. I've spent a lot of times hearing the soft whisper telling yeah. me to do things, yeah. and I didn't react on it forever. Now I just always do without mm. even second guessing. But I can remember a specific time where there's this hard ass girl, workout girl named Ginger in my exercise class, and uh-huh. she had bulky muscles, and she always wore the same light blue shorts, right. Right. and she wore arm weights and leg weights. And it was a really hard class. If I yeah. took a friend, they would throw up or diarrhea. Yeah, that'd be and me. I'd be puking and shitting at the same the time, crying and yelling, fuck you yeah. for doing this to me. And yeah. I was like, you're welcome. I'm on yeah. jump rope number 200. Ugh. So mm-hmm. anyway, I saw her and I stood by her before and I don't like her energy at all. Uh-huh. And she was in my spot, but I never go on Saturdays and she was there. I was, mm. guess, her spot too. So That's I stood her Saturday somewhere spot. else. Yeah. yeah, I didn't go on Saturdays. Like, fuck, Ginger's in my spot. And I don't want to be anywhere near her. Yeah. So I stood across the room, but it's all a big mirror, so I could look at her because she was up front there. And I'd look at her every once in a while. I was like, wow, her hair's blonde. Oh my gosh, she doesn't have on those stale, skanky-ass blue shorts. She has on some really 
cute new pants and her mm-hmm. shirt. I was just noticing something different about her. Mm-hmm. But I didn't care because I don't like her and I don't like her energy. So I finished my class, whatever. And um, a voice inside said, go tell Ginger what you noticed. I was like, I'm not going to fucking talk to Ginger. I don't right. talk to her. She's like the last person I want to mess with. And I have to get to my eyebrow appointment. Right. So I run <laughs> to the cubbies and I start getting my stuff out. And a bottle drops. And I pick it up and I'm like, and of course, it's Ginger. Of course. And I was like, hey, Ginger, there's your water bottle. And then I ran to the stoplight and almost made it didn't. Had to wait. Push mm-hmm. the button and Ginger walks next to me. I was like, okay, damn it. Ginger, can I tell you something? I just wanted you to know that I haven't seen you in a while, but today I noticed you. I looked at you and I see that your hair is blonde and you have new bright colors. And I just want to tell you it's really becoming on you. You look wonderful. Wow. And she started bawling. <sighs> bawling. And she said she was married for 27 years. Hmm. And her husband, out of the blue, she didn't see the signs, just left her for another woman. Uh, and she goes, I was three months in bed crying. And then I thought, you need to get up and do what you love. And you need to do new, fresh things for yourself. So I just got my hair done. And I just bought these clothes and came back to class. And I just talked to her. Uh, and I said, you're, you're on the right path. This is, this is going to be good for you. And then I hauled ass to my appointment. Wow. But now I know when I hear yeah. it, it's not about me. No. It's not about my mind judging it. It's yeah. about saying to the person what they need to hear. That's you coming re- out of you, the blue to my head. You, not- re- you really don't know. You really don't know. And it's very, you know, it's fine for you to feel those things. But sometimes as a parent, you are in a situation where you're always like this term lately, the snowplow parent. Have you heard that term? No. It's sort of replaced helicopter. Because I, I just sent my boy off to college this oh, weekend. Oh, I saw that yeah. picture. So that's pretty, I'm in a, my life is quite messy right now Will because I'm a little right I'm now? down I'm down a tunnel Are a you little de- bit. A little depressed? Uh, very much and yet very relieved and very excited. There's a lot going There's on. There's so much emotions because it's your whole it's but 19. Thing, okay. I just wanted to talk about just, that a little bit. You just the biggest thing is the the that you know you know you can't control their life. Yeah. And a snowplow parent plows through their life and removes all the obstacles. Oh. And that's sort of what, you know, you you do when they're little. And it's sort of like, oh, that teacher isn't a good teacher. Let's switch classes. Let's switch schools. That boy is not nice. We're not going to invite him over anymore. Um, you don't like that food, so let's not yeah, eat you're it. you're always trying to make you're everything easy and the best. You're always clearing the way. You're clearing the path. You're making a beautiful, straight, nothing Sometimes on it Sometimes you do that without being an asshole helicopter parent. Sometimes right. you do it because you want to take care of your baby. Well, there, but if you do you, it, it's a you disservice. You have to do it to point. a degree. Yes. I mean, there's. it's hard to know what is parenting and what oh, is fucking pendants. them up. Yeah, what is my shit? I'm what is my on shit? Them. And when you say that thing that we've all done of assuming things about someone and the reason why we don't like them, and that's okay because, you know, you're not out in the world telling everybody that you don't like this person. Just it's just a like feeling that, yeah, yeah, right. You're not a fan of, of you choosing to be around that. And that's fine. But like we moved our son into a dorm and it was supposed to be a triple, meaning three kids. Uh, the third one never popped up, never happened. And then the other one um my son sent an email, a lovely email that, of course, Snowplow said, you know, you're going to want to connect with this boy just for t- just so you have a little background on him. So he wrote a lovely email, you know, my name is this and I went to this school and I'm majoring in that. Looking forward to meeting you. I'm from this area. Never heard back. And then now the, that's what a mother would send an email like that. Right. But then, so he did, there was no communication. Yeah. We let it go. Move in day, lots of things going on. And one of them being that the boy shows up. And so you make assumptions based on the fact that he hasn't responded. He's not reaching out even in the room with us. He's not greeting. He's not responding to my son's greeting. He's not communicating. He's just doing what he can do. He's, I don't know what he's doing. Or he's a fucking dick or he's a piece of shit cunty motherfucking asshole boy we don't know well go on so as a parent 
Of course he's a and you're fucking you're dick. Freaking you're freaking pissed at him because you didn't respond to my baby and when he you're, put out his hand. You're legit petrified. You're legit petrified because this boy that you've had in your home for, in my case, 17 years because he's young, um, is now going to be living with someone. I don't know if he's a psychopath. And that's where you go. I watch a lot. I'm a big fan of Criminal Minds and all the murder shows. Yeah, because so, I would not go there. But I right? would not like if my baby but, reached out and no response. But if nothing else, you feel like my I know my kids freaked out. I know my kids in a new place. So your assumptions to go there, but then you lay back and you go, I'm not going to go there because I don't know. This is his experience. This child is. I don't know if he's morose because he's shitting himself and he's petrified and he's petrified of reaching out to my kid because he's, he's stuck. He can't, he's scared. I don't know. But you know what is, is it's when you said just to step back. Yeah. Regardless of what's going on in our crazy ass brains, right. it's not our first day at college. It's our son. It's our son. It's his to do. Right. It's his to navigate. It's his to break the ice. It's and his that's to- petrifying. Yeah. That's as petrifying a as a parent. And it's also, you can't put 1% of your anxiety on them. You can't be like, oh shit, that's the kid. And he's not even smart. And then we but walked around home, the campus. But wait, at home? You did say, did he ever reply? He didn't. Well, that's right. interesting. There's that's so that's there's been already set. been, and I've also been like, reach out. I haven't ignored the fact that. So there's also been little seeds planted oh, totally. on that. After that, gonna- that's me. That's me being like, let's I'll let's do, do all the prep work, and for college, I've got I've got you know 13 days to have this kid be perfect, to have this kid know how to get to bed, get Wait, up. Are you being serious right sh- now? I'm serious. Well, how can this you is, have prepare this, someone? But this is my neuroses. Oh, this is my neuroses. Thank you. I thought you were saying it. But this is no, how mom should be. I'm this saying, is oh. how me, as a fucked up mother, oh. is going. I've got you know 12 hours and 20 minutes left of me being full time parent to make sure that he knows oh, how I to. Oh, I love you're in the crunch hour. It's oh, about no, to I'm close. crazy. It's cl- the door's closing. Okay, fuck, it knows how to do its laundry. It knows how to separate. Does it know? Does it know? <laughs> it knows how to shave. Does, does it, it know? Does it know how to take a shower caddy from its room to a shower and bring it back with a towel? Oh, how's, our hearts just Oh, so, no. You know why? Because I think our hearts remember how scary it was, and we want well, to try and help them not have it. And but, also, you had to teach them how to, you know, shit in a toilet. No, they learned this on their own. This is the same being yeah. that you had to say, you know, don't have 20 sodas. You know, like you, you teach. Know, I'll have to tell you something. Yeah. Like, I really hear you, and I know when parents um, have unresolved issues from their childhood. Yes. They put them on their children, of course. whether they think they do or don't. Of course. Like, yeah. So I have things that I've done that as well, but my new approach yeah. with my children are to let them be on their own path. Right. Now with Charlie, I was the opposite. Right. I was knocking down every boulder and finding right. the right doctors and getting them in the right therapy and finding the right school and getting them in the right pit. Right. I mean, and I was so worn out by 13 when he was 13. Yeah. So worn out, I had to send him to therapeutic boarding school because right. things were so chaotic. And, yeah. and he didn't know who he was, and I was exhausted, and yeah. it was it was not getting better. So it's exhausting writing the story of who he is. You yeah, know? trying mm-hmm. to make him into right. the thought of what I thought a little boy should be instead right. of going, you want to lay down and temper tantrum? Lay down. I'll right. hug you when you're done. I'm like, get yeah. up. We got to go to football. The right. doctor said you have to play team sports. I don't right. want to play. Who cares? Yeah. You're just this, you don't even know no, what, at I the know. beginning. Now, I have a daughter who who likes to wear crop tops and drink some vodka. Yeah. And she posts pictures of herself on Instagram in her bathing suit. Right. And she wants to be a model. Right. And I get a lot of feedback from people saying she's posting racy photos. Do you know that she was drinking? And my answer is, yes, I do. Thank you. I do yeah. know. Yeah. And I've talked to, I, I don't want to sing out one kid, but I've talked to this kid. Yeah. And um, I said, I just want you to know I know who you are. Right. I know your I know your power. I know your beauty inside. I know your strengths. I said, you don't really know that right now. So you're kind of all over the place. But mm-hmm. do what you need to do. And I'm happy you're doing it under my roof. Mm-hmm. And just giving my love, support, and guidance, but no longer being like in her face about it or making a yeah. stink because it hurts both of our bodies. And instead, I'm supporting her wanting to model. And that feels good. Right. I know, it feels good to just leave them the fuck alone. Leave them the fuck alone. There's yeah. a poem by a guy named Khalil or something. Oh, yeah. 
And it talks about they are not ours. Right. They came through us, but they are not ours. They are on their own path, right. which we will never understand because it's their path. And the, the, the thing is, though, is trying to also, you have to, oh, tag in. And though, you only have one. I have, to, I have one. So, so it I gets all of it. You it did, gets all of it. It gets all the good, the bad, and the ugly. My whole Charlie was how you it did gets it all. Yeah, it gets it all. And then each kid, I'm getting more yeah. like, oh, and I needed, I And to be live. fair, mine needed a lot of that when it was yeah. little. It needed a lot Mine's of guidance. It needed a lot of, let's learn how to play with someone. Yeah, you mine know? too. Had to figure out shit. But- um, tail end, we go back to the school at the end of the day and mine brings, uh, mine brings a fan up to the room and he has his friends from high school that show up and they put the fan together and he talks to the roommate and says, I brought a fan. And then the other boy goes, oh, I brought water. And then mine's like, I brought Britta. And then they put the fridge together and we were both like, oh my God, see, it's not a dick. It's just, it's just scared. Yeah. When you described him right off the bat, my heart you, yeah, and I, I saw it. That. I could see that as a mother. I could see I this like, oh, is a... he's so scared he can't even talk. He can't even talk. He's stuck. And were his parents there? And it's, yes. And they didn't really care. Because yeah. I said to him, where's your parents? I, Did you go for dinner? No, they dropped me off and left. And it was like, oh, okay. Yeah, so he feels alone right. and Yeah, so, you know, and, I was like, okay, I get that. Isn't get that, that nice when we take a breath and let I life know. happen? I know, and that's the thing that, you know... And you also have to forget, you're just doing the best you can do. That's if you, my favorite. You know. And even when you're like, bad fucking mom, it's yeah. like, no. no, we're all doing the best that we can yeah. where we are with right. what we know. And right. when we learn better, we do better. Yeah. And I, and I've, you know, I've, I've definitely, you know, done him somewhat of a disservice by being too much that person to say, try and that's this, try that. that's single kids. Yeah. Because but I've also I've also won parenting. I've also had very clean episodes where I could go and say to him when he's mad at me for being the way I am, I say, yeah, but I won that day. That day I made you get out of your comfort zone and do something. It worked out for you. When yeah. I made you go to the hot tub team party on the cruise. Yeah. And you didn't want to go. And your option was to and stay in the room with your out. parents. He ended up spending every night with a group of teens in a hot tub on a cruise ship in Mexico oh. for five days. Oh, that's the, all you want It happened for the them. second night. He didn't want to go. And the rest of the whole week, he was not back in the room till 3.30 every night. It's like right now my daughter Margo doesn't want to go to college because she's insecure and right. she's anxious. Yeah. But I said, Margo, I promise you, even though this sounds like shallow or people like, eh, sorority. But right. I was like, I promise you, you go to a four-year you get in a sorority, you find your clique, you have study buddies. Did you do sorority? Yes. I yeah. mean, I'm I'm the most not sorority type of person because right. I'm a rebel and I uh -huh. can't be told what yeah, to I do and I, I hate that yeah. stuff. But I was always always called to standards because of my behavior oh, or missing always. study hours. And I'd be like, I love you girls so much for caring this much about me. What are we talking about today? You know, and they'd be like, Well, you came in at four AM. I was like, Yeah, because I made out with John Schroeder. Till 3.30, so I had to come in at 4. John I made that name up. Okay, because that's a real guy. It is. I'm sure there's a no, man that's out there like named John the original Dukes of Hazzard. Oh, yeah, it was the Dukes of Hazzard and I. We're getting it on the case as state, a guy. Kansas State. Right? Um, but that no, makes I, sense. I, Kansas. But what happened there was I connected with two girls yeah. really tight. Mm -hmm. I was kind of a loner, so it was neat to have that. Mm -hmm. Then I had this group of girls that we could share clothes, and then we had every Friday a function with a fraternity. Mm. So you had organized things that you're a part of just by being in it. Right. Not like you're by yourself going, and where should I go? Or what's the thing to, you know what I mean? Everything's yeah, organized. Yeah. You don't have to participate, but she needs that community. She needs right. that support. Yeah. So I said, go, I'm just going to take you to see a couple places. Cause she said, I don't want to go far away. I'm going to go to junior college and then yeah. go to UCLA after. And right. which is great, but I want her to experience. It's like, get in the hot tub. You're going to have the time of your life. I know. I'll talk to you about college after. Okay. For her, I think I know where she should go. I look forward to that. So wait, let me get this straight. I've got mm -hmm. boobs in the bathroom, stealing boobs the, the shoes, and then the we're going to have a college talk. Yes, we are. Are you going to? You're going to have your shoes off by then, and are you going to be topless? I'm going to keep my shoes on because you're fucking going to take them. <laughs> I'm going to have my. I'm going to have my top. Uh, not up. I don't pull up my top because that's a shit show down here. Oh no! What do you do? I pull down. You pull down and stretch your collar up. I can't shirt? do this. No, I'm fucked. I don't know if you're going to get to see the boobs How today. about I got an idea? Mm. You take off your... your Top. Well, I want to say... Wear a your, towel up to your boobs. Your kernel yeah. stud jacket. Mm. 
And then I turn around, face the toilet. Mm-hmm. You turn around, mm-hmm. pull your shirt up, tie your jacket under your boobs. Under the boobs. So I can't see your stomach. That's correct. And then I'll look. That's how we're going to play take it. Take a touch and a picture. That's how we're going to play it. And then you can put uh-huh. your stuff back on. And to be fair, they have a little tiny scar from a little lumpectomy. So that it makes them, and you can barely see it. So that makes them even more like, uh, you know, per, human. Story it makes them human. Yes, they have a good story. Well, one <laughs> breast has a good story. Oh, uh, man. You, what are you doing now? I'm a new person. So you're, I'm in a new, I'm in a new, no, I'm in a new life. I've been in a new life for about four days now. I'm, I, I, this is what happened. So we took it to college, left it. Why are you saying it? It makes me laugh. It's so effed up. Left it there, (laughs) left it there in its happy place. I think it's happy. I don't know. Making a point, leaving it alone. Not for you. Not texting. I mean, I only text when it, four times text when you were. He, oh, it's pretty funny but um no i've been leaving i'm leaving it all alone and oh, then paul that. went to work in nashville this week and it was for the first time i can go you know because when there's these out-of-town gigs and you've got kids or kid in my place i couldn't go because it's like oh you're going to you know he go to disney world for, for a week at and i couldn't go and bring a kid it was weird but now i can go Fun. So I chose not to go. <laughs> Fun. Because I didn't want to go. Good. Because I wanted to be home alone this week so I could feel all my feels. Oh, I love that. And oddly enough, this world opened up, which is bizarre. You and other ladies, by chance, were like, let's do this thing together this week. So I have all these. I'm going to like wow. Downton Abbey with a girlfriend tonight, and these other ladies invited me to this thing. It's weird, like the you, oh, you know saying, listening, that. and letting things have unfolded this week that you involve gave them space that involve me being in LA without anybody. They're all just events that I alone. It's really amazing, and so. I like too when you're talking earlier that you and Paul do podcasts together. I like mm-hmm. that you're here. Yeah. I didn't think of Paul. But right. he is one of the funniest motherfuckers I've funny. ever met in my it's life. Very funny. He's so damn funny. It's very funny. Is you should see it show? try to climb in a dorm bed. Oh. Do you know how tall So how tall things? is he? He's five four. He's five four. Maybe five four and a half, but now probably now, five four. He's shrinking. Yeah. Yellow but bed. I am too. Have you? We've always been an inch apart. Okay. So I'm always you're been five, taller. Five? Yeah. I'm five five. I'm more like five five and a half. I'm five five and a half. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> we got that extra half. Whatever. But anyway, he is a bright light. Yes. He shines and his face is so alive yeah. and his eyes are engaged and he's excited. Yes. He his movements and And he's a terrible person. He's a horrible person. Yeah, that's but why in I like public, him. how he yes. presents right. is beautiful. Yeah. And he's bigger than five four because his Yes. He owns his space. He is in no way insecure about his height. He is the most He's the first one to make height jokes. He's the first one to own it. And that, to me, from the second I met him, was very sexy and very attractive. He's sexy. He's like Davy Jones. He's confident sexy. He's I don't very know Davy Jones enough to know. From the monkeys. I know, but why is he He's sexy? dead now. Was he the go- one with the bull He cut? was the cutest one. The cute He's one. the one on the Brady Bunch. Yeah. Yeah. He was super cute, Davy Jones. Oh, yeah. He was cute. Yeah. But I think your husband's cuter because yeah. of his personality. My husband played Davy Jones in he a did? Brady, yeah, Brady Bunch TV movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Wearing Sophia Loren's wig. My so. husband was something. Uh-huh. I think he was the dad on Broadway or off Broadway. Uh huh. Oh, oh, in the Brady Bunch live thing. Yeah. Yes, because that was the second city. A lot of people did that Brady yeah. Bunch. They did it in Toronto, too. That was before I met him. So I yeah, that was, that, was, that, that was before I left Toronto. That was in the early, early 90s. Yeah. Everyone was doing that show. Yeah. yeah, Jane Lynch was Alice, I think. Yeah, a lot of people did it. A lot of people did it. Yeah, Jane Lynch, man, she did a little skyrocket. She, she did all right. She's doing all right. She's doing okay. She's doing like eight shows. And yeah, twenty TV shows. Yeah, hosting this, doing that. Yeah. yeah, she's doing all right. Are you doing all right? No, because you're in a hole right now. You know, I love so much. I want to talk. I have about to start over. The I have to start over. No, you I don't. St- yeah. Well, okay. Number one, all right. you have to come to my workshop, and I'm not kidding, because okay. it's perfect timing, and the stuff that's going to be addressed is so beautiful. And do I have to exercise? To women. No. Oh, you might God. have to sit and let someone do Reiki on your head for Oh, I minutes. like that. I do Reiki, I want to be touched. Oh, yeah. I do touch. Some people just do energy work above, but I put my I hands like on touching. people. Especially like you the do genital Reiki? area. My, my, uh, Reiki. my niece does that. Yeah. Yeah, she's licensed big, big timey. She does that in Canada. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do that. Yeah. 
I'll anyway, come that. because it's going to be a hundred one a hundred like minded women. Okay, and everything is women uplifting women. Okay, and and people get vulnerable and shake yeah. their old shit. And yeah, and great speakers. Meryl Hemingway is going to be there. It's a good time for that. Yeah, for me, it's really perfect. And I wasn't even going to say anything about it, but how where you are right now. Yeah, and you don't have to reinvent yourself. You don't have to do a damn thing. All right. you have to do is feel the feels. Right. I love so much that you said that you're going to feel the feelings. Yeah. Because people plow through and then they have a, a breakdown. Right. No. Yeah. yeah. I'm I, all right with that. I had a big, it's funny. I was, when we left, when we left him, I was fine. And, and I felt really the opposite of fine. I felt great because yeah. of seeing, leaving him with friends from high school and the boy, his roommate, them, you know, stocking a fridge, leaving that in the most beautiful dorm because it was brand new, leaving all that. Driving home for three hours, we talked straight just about. Remember when he did that? And it was great. And then uh, and then sending Paul off for work. And, then and a couple of days later, I, cr- I had like a big sob on my son's bed. And then last night, um, I'm spending way too much time on the, the Facebook group for the parents from, from the school. And seeing that a couple of kids got really sick. That they're like having that first I'm away from home and I'm sick thing. And I went into panic mode of like, does he have his health card? Does he know where to go? What if it's after hours? What if he's, and it freaked me out and I got scared. I was like legit scared. And I went into his room and I had a big sob. Oh, good for you. And then I, I was you know, like, if you think about God, it, and I think about me, you know, living alone in New York at, you know, 19 with $80 in my pocket and three jobs and. 20 roommates and really questionably appropriate jobs. And I go, you know. He's okay. He's okay. Yeah. Um, There's something about your child leaving because it's been your heart investment. Yeah. For 19 years. And it's literally. It's been my job. A big chunk. It's a full-time job. It's a full it's time been my job. everything. It's the, It's been my priority. Yeah. You know, even when you're like, you know, you're still doing things and you're going out and, you know, that big transition when they age out of babysitting, which is amazing. Yeah. When you can leave them at home. That's a great feeling. Yeah. When going to a movie doesn't cost $200. Yeah. That's great. Um, but but on some level, you're always navigating your choices. And in my case, I can fully feel I I did my best. I didn't miss out. Yeah. I made, there, I made regardless. choices. Yeah. There were times when I would test for um, a sitcom and and I'd be like, and I'd sit in the, my car afterwards going, oh my God, if I get this, I, will, I may not be present for the next five years and crying and praying that I didn't get my dream job. It was a very weird time. You know, it's interesting because- it's so beautiful to love your child. It's so beautiful yeah. to be there and support them and guide them. Right. Um, I I teach women actually to put themselves first and their right. kids and their marriage second right. and their kids third. Right. Because you wouldn't even have that if you didn't have your partner. You know that that Right. And I don't and I don't feel that way. I feel like I feel like I here's, here's my a- my child was always first but 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 you are only on the planet for you right he's on for him but then why is he on the planet how did he get on the planet you were the vessel that right poem we are only the vessel to bring them but that vessel they're not ours but to me that he's not my my job as that vessel is to to send it off and create or i mean how else can you explain how some people have you know, you look at your own life and when you grow up and you go, you know, no matter, and I tell people who have kids to relax because they are, just let it go because you're going to fuck them the up. The more you relax, the healthier you, they will and you, be. And you're going to fuck them up. You yeah. are. Well, this is you what I always not, say. We're not raised by human up. beings right. who didn't have their needs met. They can't right. meet all of our needs. And what they do is they set us up perfectly yeah. for what we are to overcome and one day help other people with. And how else do you explain families that have the same set of parents, that have different children, and how different those kids are? Because what one kid needs is not what the other kid needs. Yeah. So as a parent, you just do what is Needed, appropriate. What's called for. And and you might it might not be right, but it's what you did. Yeah. 
And and you got to chill with that. And I just said chill. You did. It was so 1980s cool? hip hop. You got to chill with that. But you know what? I, I, I'm a big a believer in putting yourself first because right. the only reason you are on this planet is for your soul's journey. And the minute we focus all of ourselves on yes. another human being, we are out of our walk. We're out of our business. We're out of our life. We're out of why we're really here. So with my kids, I... They say, you're leaving again? And I said, damn right. right. I'm doing something I love and you're welcome because you're going to model this and have your life as well. Right. I'm not losing myself in you guys. Right. I'm guiding you. I'm loving you. I'm holding you. I'm disciplining you. You know, I'm, I'm guiding you and loving you, but do your life. Right. Do it your way. It's, it's a balancing thing. And that's for thing. now. I used, it, to, yeah, I used to do too it's, much. It's a balancing thing because I also know that it's just shit. And I have to weigh my choices. And I have worked with people who who start in TV shows who were literally on the set when that baby was two weeks old and handing the baby off. And I'm like, what for? What's it, you know, where, you know, where's the enjoyment in your life right now? Is it to be on a TV? I just don't oh, always, I, it has to be what works in your own life. And for heart. me, I couldn't justify that. I couldn't justify. Following your dream job? Even the. the but do, what would happen if you did follow your dream job? Let's pretend you got on a show. Yeah. Let, let you bring him while you're breastfeeding. Right. And he could hang around. Or he brought a nanny to the show because you could afford it. Or they Right. And, and then he ages out of that. And he's and at school all day. And then he goes to school. And he goes to there. And he goes to someone. Else. But here's what I love about it. Right. And and this is one thing I think Hillary Clinton said. I was not a huge connection with her, kind of right. my heart with her. Right. But one thing she said, it takes a village. Mm -hmm. And what I love so much is when you give your child to another person who loves them and shows them a different thing or a different way of right. being or a different point of view right. of life, but you trust them. Yeah. It's such a gift. Yeah. Because to be with your kid all the freaking time means you're not on doing your thing and you're in their lane. But when you bring in beautiful people, I have uh, two assistants. Right. One handles all the kids' emails, the schools, the forums, helps me with driving, all that kind of stuff. Right. They love that person. Right. Like Eve wants to do their homework with her because it's more fun. Right. As opposed to, I'm going to do homework every night. I'm going to get in a fight with her because she complains and then I get pissed off. It's like, yeah, oh, that doesn't every serve night. anyone. Right. I, I'm going to hire someone to sit with her and do homework with her because that's a point where we fight. Right. I don't want to fight with my baby over homework. You know what I'm saying? Like building whatever yeah. it is or having trust that if you're filling your heart and your desire, God will provide. Right. And everyone will be happy. He'll be making chocolate chip cookies or learning how to make a pupusa from a gal from El Salvador while you're doing your dream job. And then you lay with them every night and read them stories and hold them. It's quant it's quality of time. It not is quality. Quantity. But I also I also know when when you know, and it also depends on your child and your setup. And I knew that my child really needed me when he so was So mine was a full-time so, job young right. too. So I'd be sitting in a trailer, not working, because that's the nature of it. You know, it's a lot of sit around and wait. And and not being somebody that, what you know, could say I need to be out. You know, very few people have that type of a situation. And I'd be, what am I doing? Someone else is yeah, putting my kid what? to bed right now. All the kid needs to know is mommy's coming home and right. she's got me. But for me, yeah. that that didn't work. That didn't please me. Do you me. think that was from your old, your thoughts from your childhood? Just because we're realizing, we're both realizing now. Yeah. Stay back. Right. Let life happen. But I also feel like life is this long. It's this long for me and it's this long for him. And I, I can legit now, that's part of the great thing right now is knowing that I'm not on his case right now. Yeah. I'm not that woman at night going, did you do your reading? Yeah. Did you get your homework yeah. done? Is, are your clothes ready for tomorrow? And there's something neat about it. You're letting it's him so be himself. Great. It's so great to not have and that anxiety. And you're freeing anxiety. up space for you to be creative. Yeah, definitely. Right? Yes. And to just, just to not have, like it was such a good feeling yesterday to go, I can sit here right now. One's in Nashville. The other one's at school. I could eat whatever I want. Yeah, I don't experience what, that. I love that. I don't, but That's I great. long for that. So I just want to tell you. used to be you, hotel rooms. That used to be. When I tour, I yeah. would go do tours. See, I would. I I did work. It's not like I didn't yeah. work. When I go speak, I'm, I'm so happy yeah. to be in a hotel room. Oh, I know. Isn't it great? Yeah. 
And I don't I check love emails that. and I don't look at Ordering my phone. room service and sitting in a room and watching TV or a movie even better. Yeah. That used to be my favorite thing. We have to wind up now because it's about over. Right. But what I want to say is yeah. I'm so happy you were here. I learned a lot Thank about you. you I didn't know. Mm. And I find you an even more interesting, uh, cool person. And I want you at my workshop. That sounds and good. And I'm excited for you to allow yourself this time. Yes. To do what you're really here to do and to hone in, whether it's sharing your gift and or acting or writing something, whatever it is, I'm excited for you to jump balls into yeah. it. Yeah. It's a funny time. It is. It's a good time. It's all good times. It's all mm-hmm. just a learning and growing. And yeah. this is so quick, right? Right. So it's like jump on that shit and live it. I know. It's very quick. It's time. But go ahead and feel your feels because you're still in that week. Oh, I know. And then you can get to kicking it. I know crazy yeah i'm enjoying my anything my you want week. them to check out your website your twitter your instagram oh jackie montreal is my instagram jackie at, at jackie J-A-C-K-I-E. j-a-c-k-i-e montreal m-o-n or montreal m-o-n-t-r-e-a-l oh, and, c'est vrai, je m'en viens de montreal. she speaks french oh oui absolument Oh my gosh, that's so sexy. My my mouth Mm -hmm. kisses you when I look at your breasts Mm -hmm. because I think French is so sexy. Yeah, well, French Um, French Canadians a little bit different. Yeah, not quite as sexy as the French French, but you speaking French is sexy. Oui, c'est vrai. C'est comme Céline Dion. It's good. Merci beaucoup. Oui. No, merci beaucoup is thank you. What is your welcome? De rien or... uh, What? It's nothing. De rien or... uh, De rien. uh, Plaisir. Okay, I don't want to learn that Plaisir. So, Plaisir. guys, uh, subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already. Mm-hmm. Share it with your friends, and um, we have a podcast. Don't say with Paul and Dave. That's Paul Greenberg and Dave Foley. Don't do say that. with Paul and Dave. Uh huh. Don't say it with. I Paul thought it was Dave. you and Paul. No, it's Dave Foley and Paul Greenberg, myself, and Dave Foley's wife. It's the four of us, and Eben Schletter, who does the music. Oh, I can't wait to come yeah, on that. That's really fun. I'm gonna sit right in between yeah, the two. It's very of you, wrong. Four of you. I like wrong. Yeah. And messy. Yeah. And you didn't, we, we hit a lot of messy stuff without even going, what's your messy story? Like oh, I, I with know. Most people because you gave a lot of really um, honest, beautiful information. I'm in gratitude for you being here. Aww. Want a hug? Yep. And then we'll and take boobs. it to the bathroom. And boobs. Yay. Come on up. Come on up, you little lady. Oh, darling. Oh, that was fantastic. Interesting. Fun.